uh, let Brother Koledoe Sunday Ademi please come forward for his testimony. Brother Koledoe Sunday Ademi. As he come, let's listen to this written in testimony. Say, now my wife is pregnant. Double portion greeting to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the first time, my wife and I attended the fruitfulness class together on the 12th October 2013. Having missed about three or more since we got married in June 2011. This has been a lot of concern to many and even ourselves. A lot of questions have been asked, but I had always believed that God is too faithful to forget our labor of love. God's servant, Pastor Mary Abioe, decreed during the class that before Shiloh, we shall conceive of our baby, and indeed God has confirmed the word of his servant in our lives. She also instructed that we should get tied booklets for them, write down their names and how many we, we want, which we did while in the service. We also engaged in midnight praise, pleading the blood, the blood, recently as instructed by God's servant Bishop Oedipo. Exactly one month after the fruitfulness class, my wife started noticing signs, and on Thursday, 16th, November 2013, we had a test, and she was confirmed pregnant. Please bless the God, the God of winners for me. We give God all the glory, Brother DG. Let Mrs. Comfort Enyinsan come. Mrs. Comfort Enyinsan, also come for your testimony. Praise the Lord. My name is Brother Quality Sunday Adeyemi. I'm privileged to serve in security unit. This testimony is to the glory of God. I and my wife has been married since November 2004. We have been, since then, we have been believing God for a child. In 2009, we lost three months old pregnancy. 2010, we lost four month old pregnancy. However, we are engaged by the God war and our faith increase. We key into the prophecy by the bishop from the altar. Attend Shiloh, engage in communion and sowing seed. Make Shiloh sacrifice and offer dedicated kingdom service. We keep believing God. In 2011, by faith, we started praying tight for our children. We even give them names by faith. Last year, 2012, before Shiloh, I and my wife met Pastor Mrs. Abioye. That day, she brought out a suit and a shoe and asked my wife to wear them, then prophesied upon us to be fruitful. <laughs> on, my on my wife's birthday in 2012, Bishop Abioye prophesied that this time next year, you will not celebrate your birthday alone. And both of us believe. Unknown to each of, unknowingly to each of us, at the Shiloh 2012, each, we each pledge our savings to Shiloh sacrifice. And we both tag it into our children. The week after Shiloh, our account officer scared that my wife has clear all the account. My wife answer, say she has three container load to clear at the port. To God be the glory, on the 4th November this year, God bless us with triplets. Two boys and a girl. You're clapping for Jesus. Clap some more for him. He's a faithful God. He has never failed. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Double person. My name is Comfort and Mission. I can't, I can't, I can't thank God for, for what you, I can't thank God for what you God do for me. I know if you talk too much because of the operation, what they do for me. 
So anything where they see for this paper, may they just take another like that, I beg. May they, may they excuse me. So I thank God for us. And I thank God for Mama. Mama for pastor wife. Hallelujah. She said, she wrote here, five years growth disappeared by the power of God. Let's take this written in testimony also. Hallelujah. Put some more, clap some more for Jesus as Mama goes down. Hallelujah. This one says, God has blessed us with miracle children. Before we got married, my husband and I were actively involved in the youth ministry, preaching abstinence and saying no to premarital sex. And people mocked us and said, after committing all the abortion, they will now be deceiving themselves. After we got married in March 2006, the devil told me we would not have a child and that all the mockeries will come true. Meanwhile, I got married as a virgin. During the August 2006 week of spiritual emphasis, then in Akure, it was declared as dealing with the strong man. My husband said we should take it further and make our seven days. After the seven days, the Holy Spirit told us to go for pregnancy tests, which we did, and I was confirmed pregnant. From the hospital, we were asked to go for a scan. The scan revealed a total of eight counts of fibroid and no baby. My husband anointed the results sleep and after five months, the pregnancy threatened to abort because the fibroid had increased from 8 to 13. The doctors told us to come for an operation. My husband declined. We continued taking anointing oil. And April 20, 2007, our miracle baby arrived. On the last day of the fast, 24 January 2010, Bishop David Abiyo asked us to bring our baby items and names. I wrote the baby's name and immediately after Bishop's Bishop de declaration, I believe I had gotten pregnant. I did all the pregnancy tests and it was negative. I went ahead and did blood tests and it was still negative. Even after visiting different hospitals, it got to a point I even argued with the doctor because he insisted I was not pregnant. And I angrily told the doctor off and made up my mind not to enter any hospital again. At this point, nobody in my family believed I was pregnant, not even my husband. So I went to my office and announced that I was pregnant. And to the amazement of everybody, including my husband, my stomach began to grow. At six months, I went for a scan after de deciding not to enter any hospital and was told I was not only pregnant, but it was a boy. I triumphantly showed my husband, even though he had started to believe after all that I was, after all that I was pregnant. To prove that this baby is indeed a miracle, he was delivered October 31st, 2010. On a Sunday that was stacked harvest of miracle babies. He came some minutes before 7 a.m., just before service started. We decided we wanted another baby. Our last born this time around, around another rally was declared after service on July the 8th, 2012, in Goshen. For those of us desiring children, I went and passed on Mrs. Abioe was preaching and told us to believe that we were pregnant already. And as always, I believe God. I started waiting for signals, but none came. I was not ill in any way as it used to be the case. So I just felt maybe God had not answered. Suddenly, my husband began to tell me I was pregnant. I believed him and ac accepted. My stomach also began to grow. I had to start antenata. When I became advanced, the doctors and the scanner became confused as to when my EDD was. I just went back to my sermon notes and got the date I conceived by the word which was July 8th and that helped the doctor to calculate accurately and to the glory of God. She was born 3rd of April 2013. I am a witness to the truth that the word made flesh is very much applicable in our days. To God alone be all the glory, dickness, or light to Muslim. Put those hands together for Jesus. You're so excited for what God is doing. Put those hands together for Jesus.
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glad to be in God's presence this morning. Another big shout to him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Wave those beautiful hands. Give thanks to God in the spirit right now. He that giveth thanks in the spirit, do it well. Give God thanks. Give God thanks. Pray, giving Him thanks. In the Holy Ghost. Lore bianda gaton toskite giga bato klabron de bos kataya. Ede neri mandolos kita naza. Aram bron de bren mandolos kiti en nazozo zambrani makatana ma. Diden dire kite kete niglan glom bron de bren de boko tona ma zaza za. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Bring out your prayer banquet card, and as you are holding it, consider it as Thanksgiving banquet card. Amen. Because all the issues here are already issues of Thanksgiving. They told Jesus Lazarus was dead. And they said, shall we go there? And they got to the grave. And the first thing they did, very contradictory to what a natural man would do, is shall we give thanks? And as he gave thanks, he that was dead came out. After thanksgiving, everything dead comes out. As you thank God today, every dead issue of your life will come back to life. After thanksgiving, nothing is permitted to remain in the grave. After thanksgiving, nothing is permitted to remain in the grave. After thanksgiving, nothing is permitted to remain in the grave. As you thank God this morning, no issue of your life is permitted to remain in the grave. With joy in your heart, lift up your prayer card. If you don't have one, just lift up your hand and your soul before the Lord and thank Him specifically for these issues before you. Father, I thank you for my healing. I thank you for my open doors. I thank you for the new job. I thank you for the promotion. I thank you for the marital destiny that is favorable. I thank you for fruitfulness in the works of my hand. I thank you for terminating barrenness from my family. Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. Is somebody thanking God? Even right now. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even right now. Even right now. Even right now. Even right now. Even right now, even right now, thank you, Jesus. Even right now, I give you glory. Even right now, nothing about me remains in the grave. No situation of mine remains in the grave. Everything about me coming back to life. Coming back to life. I give you glory, Lord. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you, and thank you. In Jesus' precious name we are praying father lift up your hands everybody on the behalf of this your precious people and myself your privileged servant i thank you because now you have heard us now the answers have come now we take delivery of our blessing now there is perfection for all. Now every issue in the grave comes back to life. To you alone be glory forever. And all who believe say a loud amen. And before you take your seat, I'd like you to pray. Father, be it unto me according to your word. 
Listen to this. The angel came to Mary and said, You shall conceive. And Mary said, Be it unto me according to your word. Father, as your word comes to me this morning, be it to me, unto me, as it will be declared concerning my fruitfulness, fruitfulness in my body, fruitfulness in the works of my head. Be it unto me, Lord. Speak to him. I believe. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. Be it unto me according to your word. Be it unto me according to your word. It's my season of fruitfulness. Fruitfulness in the body. Fruitfulness in the works of my head. Be it unto me according to your word. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Stretch your hands here, everybody. Now, be fruitful in the name of Jesus. I stand as an angel of the Lord because ministers of the gospel are also regarded as angels to the angel of the church in Laodicea, right? Angels are sh or shepherds are angels and occasionally an angel comes to steer the water and as the water is steers, anyone that jumps into it receives the blessing. Now by faith, from you towards God and on his privileged servant I say to you this morning be fruitful in the name of Jesus fruitfulness in your body fruitfulness in the works of your head I cause to the root right now every spirit of barrenness in the name of Jesus Everything tampering with the fruitfulness of the works of your hands, your career, your businesses, they are all caused today in the name of Jesus. I speak by the voice of the Lord that backs up this commission, and I say to you this morning, be fruitful. So shall it be. All of you who believe, say the loudest amen that you can. Get excited with a shout and take your seat. Please get seated. Get seated, everybody. Shout hallelujah. Shout a loud hallelujah. This week, there shall be amazing wonders for you. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord this morning. Everything I say for your good today must come to pass. I have received commandment to bless. And when I bless in his name, nothing can reverse it. So every good thing I say concerning you today must find speedy fulfillment. After a service like this, a few months ago, a lady and her husband went for a test. Or rather, they got back home and did their test at home three times. Meanwhile, before then, all kinds of reports, hormone imbalance and all of those scientific medical stuff, first time, second time, third time, right there at home, pregnancy confirmed. She conceived by the word. Because the word becomes flesh. The word has the ability to become anything we desire it to be. Right now, every woman that is said to have any issue of difficulty in conception, as I speak the word to you now, even before you meet your husband, you are getting conceived. Shout hallelujah. I welcome you especially this morning to this third Osana service in the series in the months in which it has been prophetically declared that praise 
works wonders. Say with me, praise works wonders. Say it the way you want to see it in your life. If you want to see tremendous wonders, say it out loud again. In the midst of praise, wonders are bound to happen. Everywhere praise goes, wonders follows. Praise is the engine. Wonders is the trailer. Wherever the head goes, the body follows. When you put praise ahead of you, wonders is bound to follow suit. That is why this month will not end without you saying strange, amazing wonders. I like your amen to be very loud in this service. All who came in with their point of contact, especially all expectant fathers and mothers, place those children's materials on the floor right now. And any other thing you came with as point of contact for fruitfulness in your business, your career, you just place it out there, place it out there, place it out there, place it out there. Some strange things are beginning to happen right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our series of teaching every Sunday since commencement of the month is engaging the power of praise for a turn around. Engaging the power of praise for a turn around. When you want a turn around, praise is what to engage. When you want a turn around, first of all, you engage prayer, but if you want it suddenly, engage praise. Don't watch your situation. What you don't want, don't watch. According to the statement made by God's servant, Bishop Oedeko, what you don't want, don't watch. The enemy you don't resist has a right to remain. What you don't want, don't watch. Number one key to turn situation around for good is prayer. Philippians chapter 1 verse 19. Philippians chapter 1 verse 19. Paul the apostle speaking, he said, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation. How? Through your prayer. Nothing turns without prayer. And Paul the apostle who wrote these scriptures, having understood this, had a situation in Acts chapter 16. Himself and Barnabas were locked up in the prison. And in verse 25, it was midnight. And Paul and Silas, they prayed. And when the answer seems to be slow in coming, then they sang praises. And the prisoners had them. And then in verse 26, suddenly there was a great earthquake. If you want a turn, pray. If you want it suddenly, sing praises. Suddenly, praise. Does it suddenly? Prayer may do it slowly, but praise does it suddenly. They sang praises. So if you want a sudden, perfect, Turn around. Turn to praise. When you turn the situation to praise, the situation bows in your favor. As we praise God again today, every negative situation will turn into positive, favorable situation. <laughs> if you see what I see, you will smile the way I'm smiling. Because by this time, next month from now, the altar shall be massively filled with children dedication. Again, what is praise? We'll look at that quickly. What is in praise? So may God is in praise. What is in praise? When we pray, angels 
are attracted. But when we praise, God comes down. When we pray, angels are attracted. Daniel was in prayer. In chapter 10, and in verse 9, down to verse 12, an angel came and touched him and said to him, from the day you began to pray, verse 10 specifically, I mean verse 12, he said, your prayers were hard. From the first day that thou didst set your heart to understand that Jesus said before thy Lord, thy words were hard, and I am come for your words. I have come for the answer. When we pray, God sends angels to receive the answer. He sends angels to receive. Even when Jesus prayed, it was an angel that came there to strengthen him. Luke 22, from verses 39 to 43. 43 specifically, an angel came and strengthened him. There appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. That is the best prayer I can offer you. When you pray, an angel will come to strengthen you to receive the prayer. But back to Daniel. After the angel came, went to heaven. As he was coming back with answer, some devils attacked him. They delayed the answer for 21 days. For 21 days, the answer was delayed from reaching Daniel. That is to say, even with angels attending to your prayer, Satan cannot push an angel. Satan can engage an angel in the fight. But when you praise God, God comes down. The Bible tells us God goes up with a shout. And when he's coming down, all the barriers are broken down. That's why praise is superior to prayer. Praise is superior to prayer. Answers to prayer is at the mercy of praise. Answers to prayer is at the mercy of praise. You can pray like praying mantis. If you don't engage in prayer and thanksgiving, the answer may be delayed. That's why it says in Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. So you pray, 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 pray without thanksgiving, without praise, the prayer remains hanging. Paul and Silas prayed. They were prayer warriors. They prayed. And when the answer seemed to be delayed, then they sang praises. They sang praises. Praise is the crown of prayer. Praise is the crown of prayer. Praise is the final signature to prayer. Jesus taught, he said, when you pray, you will begin by saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, and all of that. And he said, when you finish the prayer, you shall say, thy kingdom come. That thou, thou shalt say, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Praise is the seal to your prayer. Shout hallelujah. So God is in praise. Listen to this. In prayer, we fight to win. But in praise, we watch to win. In prayer, we fight to win. But in praise, we watch, we watch to win. How do I mean? In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, Jehoshaphat was confronted by three nations. And the time came, Jehoshaphat said, look, in verse 12, he said, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on you. He prayed to God. And then in verses 13 and 14, a prophet came and gave a word. That was the best that was done. And as they engaged in praise, in verse 22, as they sang, when they began to sing and to pray, then the Lord, the Lord of hosts, came down. He set ambushment against the children of Moab, Ammon and Moab and Seir and all of that. 
and they were smitten. They, they fought themselves in verse 23. Two nations against one nation. And when one nation was finished, the other, look at that, everyone helped to destroy another. They didn't shoot an arrow because earlier the Lord had told Joshua that you will not need to fight. You will not need to fight. When you are praising God, you don't need to fight. When you are praying, you fight. That's why they call it prayer warriors. But when you are praising God, you don't need to fight. When you pray, you are in a war. When you are praising, you are watching, you are watching, you are watching. From today, you will not need to shoot an arrow again in your life. That's why <laughs> fighting to win makes a conqueror. But watching to win makes more than a conqueror. There's a difference between being a conqueror and more than a conqueror. A conqueror is one who fought. More than conqueror is the one who did not, he did not, he did not fight. He was just watching. He was just watching. When you praise God, you are watching. When you pray, you are warring. From today, your war shall be turned into a watch. Somebody saying a loud amen to that. What is in praise? Number two. Say with me, the anointing. The anointing is in praise. The more praiseful we are, the more anointed we become to conquer. The more anointed we become to conquer. <laughs> the more anointed we become to conquer. No wonder David says, seven times will I praise thee, O Lord. Praising God always is winning always. Psalm 119 verse 164 Psalm 119 verse 164 praising always is winning always seven times a day do I praise thee because of your righteous judgment that means as I praise you you go into action to judge the enemies praise provokes God's judgment so the more you praise him the more God judges your enemies Every enemy that's against your fruitfulness today, they shall be judged. Yeah. Say a loud judgmental amen. Yeah. Now, there were 12 sons of Jacob. Among the 12, there were two most prominent. One was Joseph. He carried royalty. The other was Judah, who carried authority. One royalty that came as a result of his dreams. The other, Judah, the one with authority. And Judah means praise. When you engage in praise, you become a Judah. That is a man with authority. Genesis chapter 49, verses 8 and 9. Judah, thou art he whom your brethren shall praise. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. From today, your enemies will not touch your neck. Yeah. But your hand shall be upon their neck. Yeah. You know what that means? They will be at your mercy. Your hand shall be in the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow before you. Yeah. In verse 9, look at the kind of person that Judah became. Judah is a lion's whelp. Don't go close to a lion. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. Thou art gone up. He stooped down. He couched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall arouse him up? That is who we go close to him. When you are in praise, you become like a wild lion. When you are in prayer, you are like a sheep. You are at the mercy 
of your opposition but when you engage in praise the lion in you comes out that's why when we are praising God we see the wonders of God because God becomes wild God goes up God in quote loses control of himself in your favor today as you praise God you will be freshly anointed for conquest number three what is in praise say with me fruitfulness I didn't hear you very well fruitfulness is in praise the more you praise him the more you flourish the more you praise him the more you flourish Psalm 92 again verses 1 and 2 it's a good thing to give thanks on Lord sing praise unto your name most high talk of your loving kindness in the morning your faithfulness at night and then in verse 10 say my home should I go like the horn of the unicorn I shall be anointed with fresh oil then it went down to verse 12 the righteous shall flourish like palm tree the righteous who is doing it right by praising God he shall flourish like the palm tree he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon he shall flourish fruitfulness that's another word for fruitfulness flourishing flourishing in the body and then went down the line to, from verse 13 down to verse 15 beginning to talk about those who are planted in the house of the Lord praising him shall flourish in the courts of our God they shall bring forth fruit in old age they shall bring forth fruit in all day. They shall be fat and flourishing in their body. They will be the one to decide that they don't want to bear children again. Not menopause deciding for them. Not medical science deciding for them. At 55, at 60, if they still want, they will bring forth fruit in old age. I saw some winners are shouting right now. They are the one to decide when to stop bearing children because according to scriptures, even in old age, they shall bring forth fruit. Mother Sarah brought forth at 90. In old age, they shall bring forth fruit. You are the one to decide that you don't want a child again. Not menopause. Not menopause. You are the one to decide. Not menopause not hear me not menopause you are the one to decide it is enough i like you to despise any kind of report given to you don't be scared now that i'm 50 how will i get a child now that i'm 55 how will i get a child in old age you are not under the mercy of medicine no you are operating by the power of scriptures in old age in old age you are the one to decide not menopause you are the one to decide i'm talking to someone right now somebody's hearing me you are the one to decide but all of that will come as we praise him for your additional reading read from psalm 96 the entire chapter read chapter 98 the entire chapter joel chapter 1 verse 12 he said for as long as joy is with you the trees around you cannot languish they cannot dry up your womb cannot dry up until your joy is taken away your fruits cannot be stolen don't let the devil steal your joy he is hunting after something he wants to take your fruitfulness from you career people business people stop looking down stop looking cast down there is a future for you your future is ahead of you if you have lost anything god is the reason why you have not lost everything <laughs> they shall flourish in the cause of our god they shall be fat and flourishing in old age they shall bring forth fruit in old age in old age at 60 at 70 in old age gradually we are climbing up we have had testimony of someone in this church from our church in Lagos at 60 gave birth to a child a first child very shortly at 70 very shortly <laughs> very shortly 
very shortly. Very shortly. Because as the word of God increases, as the word of God increases, the miracles increase and multiplies. Shout hallelujah. How does this work? Praise supernaturally revitalizes the body organs. Praise revitalizes the body organs. Your organs respond to praise. When you are praising God, your liver, your kidney, your womb, all the fibroids begin to give way to the babies, to the fine boys that are to come. Let, that's why the Bible says, let everything, everything, everything that had breath, praise the Lord. Because as everything is praising God, God is revitalizing everything. Everything that praises God is entitled to a revitalization. So let your womb praise God. Let your sperm count praise the Lord. Let everything that is reproductive inside you praise the Lord. As Ezekiah was praising God, he said, the, the dead cannot praise you, only the living. When they tell you anything is dead, bring that dead thing to praise God. If they say your hand is withered and is dead, just be shaking it this way. Let everything, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. When you say you carry a dummy, a dummy brain, be shaking the head. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let everything, everything, everything. If they give you a medical report that your womb is dead, bring it before the Lord. Push it in front of your house. I mean, before you in your house and dance around it. This is what they said, but it is not dead. That was what Abraham and Sarah did. Romans chapter 4, from verse 18, there was no hope. But against hope, Abraham believed in hope. He saw something behind the report. Doctor's report is an opinion. It is not the final word. Did you hear the testimonies this morning? Those three children came in succession, supernaturally against medical hearts. Eight fibroids competing with the child. Five months after, the fibroid increased to 13. God said it does not matter. Faith says it does not matter. Let them increase, it does not matter. Let them multiply, it does not matter. God's word will soon dissolve each of them. The fry boys were there. They were there. The child was there. I don't know what's bothering you. Fibro is there. Is it disturbing you? Say with me, no. Uh -huh. You are looking, still thinking medical. You can think anything, but God's word is true. She brought forth a dickness in this church. Second child came. He said, even my husband didn't believe me again until my stomach started coming out. Then my husband believed. At the third time, he said, my husband now took charge and began to say to me, you are pregnant. <laughs> From the experience of the second one. I think the husband quickly took charge before he would lose his husbandhood. <laughs> Let every man here that is told that your wife has any problem, be the priest over your house. Be the prophet at least over your wife. Prophesy to your wife. I didn't marry you to be barren. I married you to be prosperous. My wife shall sit with me at my table with my children. Against hope, he believed in hope. And in verse 19, the Bible tells us he considered not his own body now. 
now dead. Not that it was dying. It was now dead. He, cons he didn't give attention to the thing that was dead. Stop looking at the dead report. <laughs> when he was 100 years old. Can you imagine that? Some of you are just 50. And you are confused. At 100, he said, no, no. Neither yet the deadness, the deadness of Sarah's womb. This is too emphatical. But he was strong in the faith. Verse 20. How? Giving glory to God. He staggered not at the promise of God. Every spirit of staggering, every spirit of doubt around you, I cast them out today. I inject you now with the spirit of faith. If you believe, shout, I believe. Every expectant father and mother, in the next nine months, you will be congratulated at the arrival of your new babies. Just like we have had the testimony of three plates this morning, in nine months' time, you will be counting one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. As many as you desire, male, female, you'll be counting. And they'll be helping you to count. And all of them shall be alive. And all of them shall be strong. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> he was strong in the faith. And as they were praising God, their bodies were getting revitalized. As they were praising God, their bodies were getting revitalized. Because in praise, all organs respond. In praise, all organs respond. Shout hallelujah. That's why in Isaiah chapter 54, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah chapter 54, verses 1 and 2. I like the way that scriptures began. Sing, O ye barren. Sing. That is not the thing to tell a barren woman. The barren is prone to seeking sympathy. But hear what the word says? Sing, O barren. And I mean, you that have not born a child, break forth into singing. You may not feel like it, but break forth into singing. And cry aloud. That means let your voice be the loudest in praise. Thou that does not travail with child, labor in praise if you want to end up laboring with a child. Loud. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord of hosts. And as you do that, he says, your coast shall be enlarged. You bring forth your fruit. This morning, a strange walk has taken place. <laughs> to all women expecting their pregnancy, I'm not saying you shall be pregnant. I'm saying you are already pregnant now. <laughs> now. Now. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. When? Now. when? Say it again. Now. now. To all dying businesses and careers, you are fruitful now. Now, 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 I decree all round fruitfulness for you in the name of Jesus. Give God a big hand, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How many of you can see something happening right now? Something's happening right now. Hallelujah. Now, quickly before we rise to pray, you are seated in this service this morning. You have enjoyed the teaching. But something inside you tells you that you are not aligned with God. You lack the peace of God. You lack the joy of God. You know you are not born again. You know you have not given your life to Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know yourself. Don't be an hypocrite. 
The worst deception of life is self-deception. Don't deceive yourself. You know yourself. You know you are not right with God and you want to make things right with Him. You know, if Jesus comes now, you are not sure of going to heaven. You don't have assurance of salvation. I want to pray for you. Wherever you are, will you consciously, boldly, stand to your feet. Right now, stand to your feet. I want to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I commend your sincerity. I commend your truthfulness. God bless you. More people are standing up. Quick, right now. I want to pray for you. Now, in addition to this, there are also individuals who once was very zealous, committed to God. You made a vow you will follow Jesus till the end of the, your life, but somehow you dropped. You drew back. You didn't like it, but you couldn't help it. Some circumstance pushed you out of the faith or turned you to become a cold Christian. You are not as zealous as you used to be, but today you want a change. You want to return fully back home to Jesus. You want your faith reconnected to Jesus. Wherever you are, stand to your feet as well, so I can pray for you. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe you've gone so far, and you are thinking, will Jesus take me back? As a matter of fact, he's already looking for you. You are not the one looking for me. He's the one looking for you. That's why he's calling you right now. Quick, stand to your feet. All of you who are standing up, I'd like you to carry your Bible and whatever you came to church with and come to the altar to meet with Jesus so I can also have the privilege of praying for you. All of you who stood up and those of you who will join them, come to the altar here right now, quickly. Come to the altar here quickly. Church, get excited. Can you see them coming with eagerness? They are coming with speed. God bless you. Keep clapping for the Lord. Let's receive these precious people into the kingdom of God. They are saying bye-bye to the devil. God bless you. God bless you. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. All who are expecting fruitfulness this morning, will you clap better for the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you are coming, hasten your steps, hasten your step, hasten your step, hasten your step. Don't leave your bag behind. Don't leave your cap behind. Don't leave anything you come to church with behind. Don't leave a little child behind. Everything you come to church with, start coming, start coming. Thank you, Jesus. More people are coming right now. Thank you, Jesus. Satan, you are a loser. You have no right to keep anybody down. Thank you, Jesus. I lose everyone's soul that should be saved this morning. Satan, your game is over. You cannot deceive anyone here. No, 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 no. More people are standing up. More people are coming to be saved. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. As we wait a few more seconds for others to come, please be reminded of this powerful book of the month, Understanding the Power of Praise. Please get copies of yours from the bookstore that are at the main entrances of the auditorium and be blessed as you do so in Jesus' precious name. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Our miracles are real for the week is also out. Um, engaging the power of praise for healing. Engaging the power of praise for healing. This will do you a lot of good. The brief teaching and the testimonies of last Sunday are all contained therein. And above all, there is an unction that's upon this material. It turns people's life around. Diverse miracles take place. Please pick copies of yours. It is blessed, dedicated, sanctified. Everywhere it goes to, it produces results in Jesus' precious name. Shout hallelujah. Now, all of you in front here, please bow your heads in prayer. Bow your heads, all of you in front here, and say this simple prayer with me as you lift up your right hand. Bow your heads in prayer and say with me, Lord Jesus, say it out loud, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go.
Jesus. Get your bottles of oil, everybody. Every yoke of unfruitfulness is here by a broken today. Every mockery over your life is here by terminator today. After the anointing is judgment. If there be any diabolical force behind your situation, I send tribulation back to them in the name of Jesus. All who say you will not carry your children will not be alive to see the children. Your shame and reproach is here by road away. Take a portion of the oil in your right palm. In your right palm. As we are praying this prayer, not only are expectant fathers and mothers receiving their miracle children, businesses are flourishing. Careers are flourishing. There shall be no more dryness in any affair of your life. At the same time, healings are taking place right now. Diverse miracles are taking place right now. I release this anointing today for all unfruitfulness in the name of Jesus. As a privileged servant of God, I stand in the gap this morning for all expectant fathers and mothers. And I declare that according to the word of life, by this time, nine months you are bringing forth your children. Because God confirms the word of my mouth, I declare it is so established for you. In all areas of your life where you deserve fruitfulness, receive it today in the name of Jesus. No more dryness for you. And anyone and everyone will expect any kind of healings and miracles by this anointing, it is released to you in the name of Jesus. By this anointing, you shall be fat and flourishing. All negative medical verdict over your life is hereby cancelled. You are blessed. Now take this oil on your head and pray intensely in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Don't pray in the language you understand. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Intensely. Intensely. Intensely, intensely, in the Holy Ghost. Intensely, le hekete gaga, le hekete gaga, le heteke, 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 tu kaka gaga, tu kaka gaga, tu kaka gaga, tu kaka gaga, le heti, le heti, le heti, le heti, le heti. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, your miracle, your blessing, yes, your fruitfulness, yes, your children, miracle, children, male, female, yo, rakatagada. Hallelujah. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. It is done. Hallelujah. It is done. Now, I declare you all fruitful in the name of Jesus. If you are standing in the gap for any of your relations, very shortly you will hear a report that they have conceived. No more sorrow in your houses. 
No more crisis in your homes. You are blessed. If you desire to, you can take a shot of this as you drink it right now to take care of all the things that may be internal. And I decree right now that the power of Jesus goes into your system establishing this miracle. No more barrier. No more hormone imbalances. No more issue of low span count. No more issue of cervix problem. No more issue of eggs or ovaries. Everything is working right now. In Jesus' precious name. Please start dancing back to your seat. Take that shot right now. Take that shot right now. Take that shot right now. Choir, you'll still be singing. Now listen, there are individuals here this morning. You have experienced some touch in your body. Some healings have taken place. As we praise God, some three more minutes, you'll jump out here to come and share your testimony. We'll still take testimonies right now. You'll jump out here and share your testimonies. You'll jump out here right now. All of you who have relations that you have stand in the gap for, you get back and tell them that the miracle has taken place already. Make sure no mother, no father has forget anything they brought to the altar here. Now, 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 quiet, get ready. We'll sing just two, three more minutes. You have received a miracle. You have received a touch of healing in your body. Some strangers, some strangers have disappeared from your body. Jesus requires that you should come to appear before the priest to share your testimony. Quickly, let's do that right now. Let's go.